Bay Area man who lived through the worst maritime disaster in U.S. Navy history. He survived not only the sinking of the USS Indianapolis during World War II, but also what is considered to be the worst mass shark attack ever. Hundreds of sharks literally attacking them day and night for several days until they were finally rescued. KTVU's Ken Wayne has the story of survival from a man who says he never even considered he might die. When the USS Indianapolis sailed through the Golden Gate on her way to the Pacific Theater in 1945, Benicia's Harold Bray was a fresh 17-year-old sailor on his first deployment. Little did he or the other crew members realize they were on what would turn out to be an historic and tragic voyage. In one of the ship's hangars, a large wooden crate. The Marine Guards on it at all times. We could not go near this thing. Inside the crate, the nuclear bomb that would be dropped on Hiroshima to hasten the end of World War II. After the crate was delivered to the island of Tinian, the ship was ordered to the Philippines. Bray was sleeping under a gun turret in the dead of night when the ship was attacked. The first torpedo hit right on the, on the opposite side of where I was sleeping. And rolled me off this ledge of a 10 foot drop. The ship was already sinking as Bray scrambled for a life jacket and headed for the quarter deck. That's where I jumped off. And I was still about 30, 40 feet off the water. And when I hit the water, somebody hit me and drove me down. And I happened to open my eyes and looked up, and the moon was out, and there's a big. I thought the ship was coming down on top of me, but it was oil slick in the water, and I broke through that. And uh, I looked back at that time, and she was up on her bow, going down. In 12 minutes, the ship was gone. Bray found a floating cargo net in the oily water, something he would cling to for the next four days and five nights. Of course, the sharks showed up pretty, pretty uh, soon after we hit the water, but uh, uh, they were there all the time. The thrashing survivors and bloody water no doubt attracted the sharks. The dead and injured were first to be hit. The first couple days, they, uh, those guys never lasted very long. So it was all the time, day and night, the sharks yeah. were there? Yeah, they were, they're never gone. Uh, but they weren't always attacking. They're, you could look down and see them swarming. Ray says he thinks his dark Navy dungarees kept sharks from going after him, even though they bumped and nipped at him. The exact number of men killed by sharks is hard to determine, but it's considered the worst mass shark attack in history. When the sharks weren't biting, some men were going delirious from thirst, drinking oily seawater. The guys were, were floating around with their mouth open and the... And they're full of sores, and their tongues falling up, and their eyes were all... It was, a, it was a, not a good scene. Guys would swim away. Hey, come on, there's, there's a lot of oil over here. We'll, they'll let you on, but uh, they'll feed you, but you can't get on, or something like that. And then they swim away, and you never see them again. So they were hallucinating? Oh, yeah. On the fourth day, a Navy plane spotted the men, and a rescue ship soon arrived on scene. And uh, they pull up alongside and threw a, Higgins, a, a Jacob's ladder over the side. And uh, I said, can you climb up, sailor? I said, hell yeah. I, said, I couldn't even lift my arms out of the water. So the two guys jumped in the water and got me out. For the next two or three days, Bray fell into a deep sleep as the ship headed to a Navy hospital in the Philippines. The guy woke me up cleaning the oil out of my eyes, and I grabbed his arm. And I remember him saying, that's OK, sailor. And out I went again. Bray says he lost 30 pounds during the ordeal and probably would have died in two more days. Out of 1,196 men, just 317 survived the torpedoes, the sharks, the elements. I don't remember ever thinking about it, uh, not making it. But, you know, when you're 17, 18 years old, you don't think about stuff like that. After the war, Bray became a Benicia police officer. Long retired, he now speaks to audiences about his experience on the Indianapolis, often at schools where many have never even heard the story. And it's really amazing how little they talk about it in schools. There are now barely two dozen Indianapolis survivors still alive. Harold Bray, now 89, is the youngest. I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones 
Uh, we lost a lot of guys. We lost 880 guys within the five days. They say that 900 of us got in the water and 300 got killed instantly. Next July, Bray will return again to the city of Indianapolis to reunite with his fellow survivors until there are none. In Benicia, Ken Wayne, KTVU Fox 2 News. What an incredible story. You know, I just read a book about the Indianapolis. I, I literally couldn't put it down. It, it was incredible what they went through. And, and to think about him being 89 now and, and what he's gone through mm -hmm. and how great he looks. Yeah, he and, looks fantastic. And more power to him for speaking out because I think it's important for people to know that story. It's an incredible story. And it really it, is. the ship sank in 12 minutes. And it, literally surrounded by sharks day and night. They'd attack in the morning and they'd attack at, at, at twilight. Mm -hmm. Still